Are you looking to host your project on GitHub Pages, but aren't quite sure where to start? No worries. In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know so that you can start working with GitHub Pages and hosting your projects today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you everything that you need to know to start working with GitHub Pages. So the first thing that we need to do is talk about what GitHub Pages actually is. So GitHub Pages is a static site hosting service that is available from GitHub. So static site, essentially in this context, means that there's no server-side rendering. So we're not gonna be using frameworks like Ruby on Rails or ASP.NET Core. It's just going to be static client sites. These can be just HTML files, um, or it can be even generated by by a modern framework as long as it's gone through a build step or you set up a build pipeline using GitHub Actions. Going through these bullet points, like I said, there's no application server. So again, just static sites here, front end clients only. So we're mainly working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, you can connect to other APIs, you know, if you're using uh, JavaScript to reach out to other sources to power your site or do interactions on your site, but GitHub pages cannot host the server directly. So that's the biggest difference here. Like I mentioned, we can use front end frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, et cetera, uh, but we either need to commit the compiled output into GitHub or utilize a build step through GitHub Actions. So that build step through GitHub Actions is out of scope for this video, but if you're comfortable working with something like React or Angular, and you've gone through the build process using the build script uh, inside of your project, you can host that output inside of GitHub Pages with no problem. Now GitHub Pages allows you to have one main site per account. So basically for your GitHub account, you can have one main site that represents uh, you, and that's going to be at whatever your GitHub username is, .github.io. And then from there, you can have unlimited project sites. And so for each repository, each repository can essentially be its own hosted site if it is a project that outputs CSS, uh, HTML, and JavaScript in some way. And so those will typically have the form of github username.github.io slash whatever your project name is. And the project name is derived from your repository name. All right, so now that we've got some of the prerequisites out of the way, let's go ahead and see how we can host our site using GitHub Pages. All right, so on my screen here, I have a demo project that I created that's basically just an HTML file, a JavaScript file, and a CSS file. So this is basically just a static website. The index page here is what's going to be loaded when the user navigates to uh, this GitHub Pages URL. And so let's go ahead and see how we can get this project uh, up onto GitHub Pages. So inside of the repository up here on the top navigation bar, we should have a tab over here on the right hand side called settings. So if we click this on the left sidebar here, if we scroll down about halfway, we can see there's a section here that says pages. We can go ahead and click that. And this is how we can deploy our site to GitHub Pages. Now, behind the scenes, it's actually just using GitHub Actions to do the deployment, um, but there is a server that is hosting these files. So what we wanna do is go ahead and deploy from a branch. Now in our project, we only have a main branch, so we're gonna go ahead and deploy from main, and then we're gonna deploy from the root folder. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it on root because we only have our main root folder with an index in there. That's what we wanna go ahead and serve when the page loads up. If we scroll down a little bit more, there's a spot for a custom domain. So if you own a domain and you wanna point that to uh, your GitHub project using GitHub pages, you can totally do that. All right, so when, what we're gonna to wanna to do here in order to kick off the build is go ahead and switch this main branch to none and go ahead and click save. And then once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and switch it back to main and then click save again. And then that should kick off a build. So if we go into the actions tab up here on the top, go ahead and click on actions. We can see that there is a pages build and deployment kicked off by me, the common coder. And so as soon as this is done, we should be able to see our site in GitHub pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here on the actions tab so we can see this workflow run. And this should refresh automatically, but if you don't see this green check mark show up in a little bit of time, just go ahead and refresh and see uh, if it updates after you click refresh. But you can see here that we have a green check mark, which means that my build was successful. So if I go back into the settings tab, click on the pages tab in the sidebar, you can see that it has added this section up here at the top that it says my site is live at thecommoncoder.github.io slash my project name, which is GitHub Pages Demo. So if I click on visit site here, you can see that it loads up my page, which is just a simple site. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. This says hello world. This page is hosted using GitHub Pages. We can see that here in the URL up here at the top. And it's dynamic too. So I'm using JavaScript on this page to dynamically add this little bit of text. So if I refresh this, we can see this here. It's not there. And then it appears after a certain amount of time. 
And so this is how you use GitHub Pages. So when you first navigate to the Pages tab, if you've never done a Pages deployment before, we need to either switch this from None to Main, and that will basically kick off the build and make sure we select our folder. Um, if we're on Main and the folder's already there, we need to go ahead and select None, basically to take us off the branch, and then select our main branch again, so that way it picks up the deployment and automatically deploys to GitHub Pages. And what's cool now is if I make a change to this, it will automatically redeploy my site for me. So for example, let's go ahead and go into VS Code. And I have this GitHub Pages demo here. I'm gonna go ahead and click into my index.html. And maybe instead of a period, I want an exclamation point here because it's exciting that we're deploying from GitHub Pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that exclamation point using Visual Studio Code source control panel. I'm gonna go ahead and commit this change. So we'll just say add exclamation point. I'm gonna go ahead and stage the file and then click commit and then push these up to GitHub by clicking this sync changes button. All right, and so once I push that change, if we go into the actions tab, you can see that GitHub recognizes that change and then it kicks off another build. Okay, so depending on how you have your project set up, maybe you're deploying from a branch or maybe you're deploying from main, each time that GitHub recognizes there, there's been a change to that branch, it's going to automatically build and redeploy your site to GitHub pages. You can see that that second build was successful. So if I jump back over to my demo project that's being hosted on GitHub pages, if I refresh this, there is my exclamation point. You can see that it's also still dynamic. All right, and so that is going to do it for this GitHub Pages demo. Thank you so much for coding along with me today. If you like this video and found this information valuable, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're going to be learning a lot more about Git, GitHub, GitHub Pages, web development, and pretty much everything in between. So if that's what you're into, I'd really love to have you along for the journey. So until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next video.